Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Now we're going to go back over some of these verses. Matthew chapter 7. This time we're going to read verses 19 through 23. Listen to this. Father, I ask you to anoint this in Jesus' name. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Pat's two cents. Let me stop right there. Do you know how many people are under the false doctrine that once you give your heart to the Lord, once you have gotten forgiven for sin, you can do whatever you want to do. You are eternally secure. This negates that. This totally rebuts it. It, it knocks it down off its little pedestal. Listen, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, doeth, doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, I gotta stop again. Pat's two cents again. Listen. Doing the will of your father means when you have the right to get angry and be selfish and self-centered and you want to ball somebody out because they inconvenienced you because it's all about me. When Jesus himself said, "You shall, he that loses his life shall gain it. He that finds his life shall lose it. Listen, stop being so caught up in me, myself, and I. That is one way of losing out. Self-centeredness and selfishness and, and, and everything revolving around you. Somebody could lose their job. They could, somebody could die. They could really run into a hardship. But they owe you money. Where is my money? Oh, trust me. God does not smile on that. I don't care how many hallelujahs or Hail Marys you say. God does not smile on that. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, I love the way it says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, you're saying, but wait a minute. That's two cents. You're saying, wait a minute now. They, they called him Lord. That means that he's their Lord and Savior. And, and, and they prophesy. That means they must have been filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives the gift of prophecy. Good point. Very good point. Valid, in, in, in fact. And they cast out devils. How can they cast out devils? Unless they have the Holy Spirit. How can they have the Holy Spirit? Unless they're saved. Good point. And in thy name, done many, one, many wonderful works. Many. Many. Well, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. So what does that mean? That means in spite of the fact that they believed in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, were filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire, probably speaking in tongues to boot, and they're operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Glory! What power! 
see, they forget the scripture, excuse me, that says, your gifts and callings are without repentance. If I give you a basketball, it's a gift. You play with that basketball, you have fun with it. You're operating the gift the way I intended it to be functioned. But then you turn around and you get mad at somebody and you take the same basketball that I gave to you as a gift. And you bang somebody upside the head and they end up in the hospital. Because you were angry with them. You decided, oh, I'll fix you. Bam! Upside the head. Now, yeah, I gave you the gift. The gift is still yours. But that was not the intent. All right, I'm going to let you think and stew and chew on that one. Verse 23, I'm repeating it for the sake of driving the point home. Jesus says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity what is iniquity iniquity is sin iniquity is sin so if you're professing your name and your claim and your blab and your grab and you got all the power of the holy ghost working in you baby folks might even be getting healed under your unction of the of the Holy Ghost, and here you are operating in miracles and wonders, casting out demons, no doubt. Oh, you are a wonder. People know you. People know your name. Did you hear about Brother So and So? Who powerful man of God. But Jesus. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Scary, ain't it? Just when you think you got it in, like Flynn. Just when you think you're rubbing elbows with the almighty God of the universe. Just when you think, oh boy, folks look up to me, look at me, operating in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And then Jesus disowns you like you're a piece of dirt. I never knew you. I know you ain't talking to me. Not the way you've been living. <laughs> you got to be jiving. God ain't jiving. He ain't playing. There's a scripture that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, your life ain't going to be worth to do. Because there's nothing compelling you. You either have to fear him or love him. And once you love him and you get to really know him, you see his awesomeness, that right in there. Let you know, I can't play with this. I don't care how much you love him and how much you know he loves you. You know you can't play with him. You don't play with him now. You don't play him for a flunky. Don't play him for a fool. He says, be ye holy. For I am holy. 